that, smocks are waterproof, long sleeve, machine washable and easy to sew. But first, some bloopers. That's a messy way to paint, mate. Nothing more annoying than joining elastic together. It's looking beautiful. I started talking and press the record button to check the link. <laughs> Whoops, it better change back to a straight stitch. I'm glad you are. Bring on, I need my phone. My name's Marie and today I'm teaching you how I sewed these art smocks. I've made these art smocks in two different sizes, a size that goes up to about a four-year-old size, so four-year-olds and younger, which Isabel is wearing an example of that one today. And then the second size is larger and it's suitable for four-year-olds and older. Yep, that's me and larger. <laughs> These art smocks have been useful for painting activities like this or any sort of messy activity where you don't want your kids' clothes getting dirty. These art smocks are waterproof and they're made from PUL that I have from Noosa Fabric Co. I'll link the fabric in the description box in case you'd like to buy some for yourself. And also in the description box, I'll be linking the pattern if you would like to use this pattern to sew along with me. It'll have pattern pieces for both of the sizes of art smock in that downloadable PDF along with the instructions as well. I've been working really hard over the past few months to make this pattern and I am really proud of it so I'm glad you're here to watch this video with me. So with all of that being said, let's get making. My mum makes art smocks. You're going to need to download and print the pattern that's linked in the description box and tile it together like this. I have a front pattern piece here and my back pattern piece as well. You're going to separate the front pattern pieces from the back pattern pieces and lay out each of them separately to make the shape of the art smock. You do this by matching up the letters, which show you which pattern pieces join together. So A and A join together, B and B, C and C, etc. And the little circles that are printed on there help you to align the pattern pieces so that they tile correctly. Once you've either glued or sticky taped your pattern pieces together, then we're ready to cut out our pattern piece, ready to use it on our fabric. There are two different sizes for this art smock. The smaller version is for four-year-olds and younger, and the larger art smock is for four-year-olds and over. Today I'm going to be making the smaller of the patterns. So when I cut out my pattern piece, I'm going to be following the dotted line, which will give me the smaller size art smock. And I'm also cutting out the notches because the notches will help me to align the pattern pieces when I'm ready to sew it together. Once you've got both of your pattern pieces cut out, we're ready to cut them on our fabric. The front pattern piece here needs to be cut on the fold and our back pattern piece you're going to cut two of mirrored to each other. So a left hand piece and a right hand piece. The fabric that I'm using today is PUL, which is a waterproof fabric. It's not a good idea to use pins when you're using this type of waterproof fabric. So you're going to want to either trace your pattern pieces onto your fabric that you're using, or use some pattern weights or just any sort of heavy things you've got lying around on top of your pattern pieces so that you can cut your fabric out more easily. This particular fabric is from Noosa Fabric Co. So I can link it in the description box if you would like to buy some for yourself. Remember as you're cutting out your pattern pieces to also cut out the notches. If you have fabric that matters the direction of your print, then you're going to want to keep that in mind as you're cutting out your pattern pieces. You need to make sure that the back and fronts are both orientated the same way so that you don't have one of your pictures upside down if that matters for your fabric. The next step is for us to attach the front and back pattern pieces together by sewing along the arm seams and down the side seams. So to do that I'm going to have the pattern piece of the front of my art smock with the right side facing up and I'm going to lay the back pattern pieces with right sides facing down on top of it. I'm going to match up the notches on the sleeve and on the waistline to make sure the pattern pieces are in the correct spot and then I'm going to use my wonder clips to pin them in place. My pattern pieces are now clipped together, ready for me to sew it on my sewing machine. If you don't have wonder clips, you could use paper clips or hair clips or something like that. Or if you want to use pins, you just need to make sure to use your pins in the seam allowance and not on the actual uh, fabric that you're going to see on your art smock because it will leave little marks, little holes in your fabric. We're going to be sewing from the neckline all the way down the sleeve to the wrist and then starting from the wrist and sewing underneath the arm seam down to the waist. Then we're going to take our pattern pieces to our sewing machine so that we can use a straight stitch to attach them together. We'll do that on both sides of our art smock. I used a one centimeter or three eighths of an inch seam allowance when I was sewing each of those sides and once it's all sewn together it looks like this. The next thing I'm going to do is to get my fabric scissors and to just snip in the armpit area here because it is a curved seam and that will cause a lot of bunching here when I turn my art smock in the right way. 
So this is the underarm seam here and you just want to do very little slits which will help the fabric to move on that curved seam. You want to make sure that you don't cut your stitches though. I'm just going to cut off half of the seam allowance on either side which will neaten up the edges so that they look even on both sides of my fabric. It is just going to be inside so it doesn't really matter but just so that it looks a little bit more neat and professional I'm snipping off that excess seam allowance to make it look a little better on the inside. Turn your art smock out the right way and it should be looking like this. The next step will involve some bias tape. You can buy bias tape already made from any sort of fabric shop or you can make it yourself. This yellow bias tape I made in last week's tutorial so if you would like to learn how to make bias tape too you could go and watch that video so that you can make some for yourself. Bias tape is essentially a piece of cotton fabric that has been cut on the bias on the diagonal of your fabric and folded in a certain way so that the edges are encased in the middle. We're going to use this to provide a decorative edge to our art smock and also to finish off the edges here on the back because it's a little bit tricky to hem something with so many curved edges. So instead it's easier to just finish them off by using some bias tape. We're going to start sewing our bias tape here on the back of our art smock starting at the top near the neck, going down one back side, along the bottom of the front and up the other side of the back of the art smock, reaching up to the neck on the other side. I have my bias tape ironed in half so that it's the same on both sides and I'm going to slide the edge of my art smock into that piece of bias tape here so that it encases that raw edge on my art smock. You're going to want to change the thread and bobbin on your sewing machine so that it matches your bias tape and we're going to again be sewing a straight stitch so that we can attach our bias tape to the back of the art smock. You don't need to pin or clip your bias tape in place before you start sewing. You'll just sew a little bit and then manipulate the bias tape to follow the curve of the art smock and continue sewing along. It looks like this once you have finished sewing your bias tape around that back edge there, nice and professional looking. And the next thing we're going to do is sew our bias tape around this neck edge here. The bias tape is going to act as a casing for some elastic that we're going to thread in here, which will be both the way to draw the art smock close around the child's chest so that no paint or whatever goes down their shirt, but it's also the way that it's going to attach the back parts together so that as the child pulls the elastic over their head, the back is already attached to each other. There's no need to Velcro or have any adult help them to fasten the back. They can just put this on themselves, which is always a bonus, I think, that children like to be independent with these things and I like to not have to help people with things. That sounds me. As we sew our bias tape around the neck edge, we're actually going to not sew this first part here for the first three centimeters or one inch. We're going to start sewing about an inch into our bias tape here and then sew the rest of the way around our neck band with the bias tape. And then again on the other side, we're going to stop an inch or three centimeters away from the edge. You do need the bias tape to still be there, but we're not going to sew that part yet because we want to attach the bias tape to the other end before we close over the hole and the casing. I'll show you as we do it, it'll make more sense. I have the edge of my bias tape hanging off a few centimeters here and I'm also going to leave a one inch gap before I start sewing my bias tape. And the same at the other end, I'm going to leave an inch gap so that I'm able to use that as part of the elastic casing and I'm also going to cut a bit of excess off on the other end as well. Open out your bias tape and sew the two sides of your bias tape together so that they meet at the same point that the back two pieces meet. So it'll look like this once you sew the back of the neck band together. It matches the same point that the two back pieces meet each other and I've chopped off the excess of the bias tape that I won't need anymore. The next step is to thread our piece of elastic through this neck casing. So I'm going to take my piece of elastic and attach it to a safety pin so that I'm able to thread it through the neck band casing. The written pattern that I've linked in the description box will tell you how much elastic you need for each of the sizes of art smock. To make sure I don't lose the end of my elastic, I like to attach it with a wonder clip just here so that uh, I know that it's not going to get lost inside the casing. And when it comes out the other side, I'll be able to sew a zigzag stitch to attach my two pieces of elastic together. 
and then I'll sew the casing closed with a straight stitch. At this point our art smock is pretty much done. The last thing we have to do is just to finish off the sleeves. We're going to put elastic in the wrists of our art smock which will hopefully prevent any paint or anything else from going down their sleeves. Now P-Well fabric isn't going to fray so I'm not going to need to fold it over twice to encase the raw edge for fraying purposes but if you would like to do that in order for it to look nicer so that it's uh, not showing this raw edge you could do that but I figure if you're sort of seeing the raw edges here then it's not really a big deal to see the raw edge of this part either. When I'm folding the edge of my cuff over I like to put these wonder clips on the side seams here just to keep it in place because as you're sewing around the little cuff it can be hard to keep the distance correct if you're just eyeballing it. So I've just folded it over once and I'm going to run a zigzag stitch around this edge on my sewing machine leaving about a three centimeter or one inch gap so that I'm able to thread my elastic through. And just like we did with the neckband, once I've threaded my elastic through, I'm going to zigzag stitch the ends of my elastic together. And then I'm going to close over the casing using a straight stitch. And then I'll do the same thing on the other sleeve as well. And with the elastic now in the casing in the wrists, our art smock is now complete. So this is what the art smock looks like now that it is all finished. And now we'll cut to my kids actually using it. Hey, I'm blue. Okay, I'm ready for a bit of a rainbow set. I'll show you. This is a rainbow splat that I did. Whoa, man, look at my looking now. So there you have it, you've now seen how I made these art smocks here. If you make one of these yourself, I would love to see a picture of it. You can tag me on Instagram at mymummakes.marie or you can use the hashtag showmysew if you would like me to share your creation with our community here on my YouTube videos. Today in our Show My Sew segment, I'm sharing an Etsy shop called Daisy's Handmade Australia. And the lady who runs it, Wendy, she makes some really lovely knitted pieces, some hats and uh, cardigans and little baby headbands. They all look really cute and really well made. I particularly like the little pixie style hats. They look really great. Um, I'd love for you to check out her shop. I'll link her shop in the description box down below if you want to check it out. And thanks, Wendy, for letting me share your wonderful creations on my channel. If you would like me to share your creation here on the channel, then don't forget to tag Show My Sew on Instagram or Facebook when you share one of your sewing or knitting or any other sort of project that you would like to share with our community. Don't forget to check the description box for the link to the pattern that I've made and any of the other links that I have suggested that you might want to check out after this video. And until next time, go get creative and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.